I'm Polly Sayer and this is The Sheer Luck Show. Today we have all the inspiration you need for spring evening looks with Anna Bromelow, a peek behind the scenes at makeup artists hard at work at London Fashion Week, we taste test various meal kit boxes and join the SL team for another busy day in the office. But first, I'm joined by writer and brand consultant Billy Bartia, SL regular Anna Adai, and fashion and content director Flora McDonald Johnston. Welcome, ladies. So lovely to have you all. How are we doing? Yeah, good. Doing yeah. Well. good. Yeah. Flora, first time on the sofa for you. We're first just... time on the seat. Yeah, and we're Loving just admiring it. your amazing Gucci boots. The little boots. So yeah. damn cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> well, speaking of fashion, now fashion month is coming to a close, isn't it? It's been a real goodie, I think. I feel yeah. quite, yeah. quite inspired by it. So I want to know what have been your favourite shows, any well moments. Billy, I'll come to you first. Well, I love Paris. It's my favourite city because I feel like everyone just goes extra yeah the production is bigger everything is better basically mm. on that stage i think harris reed's debut show for nina rishi yeah. was beautiful it yeah. was so joyful i loved the valentino show with all of the ties i don't know if i could personally wear that but <laughs> appreciated it on other people yeah um sakai was amazing always so sporty it's what i want to wear all the time and i know it's a fashion cliche but the rose show is just yeah, oh, perfection. Yeah. yeah, just nails it, doesn't it? <laughs> Flora, how about you? My response is a little bit nerdier because <laughs> I was kind of really intrigued by all the use of tech this season. So I loved the robots at Caperni and how mm. they're interacting with the models. Um, I think they always do such a brilliant uh, kind of intriguing mix of tech and fashion. Mm. I was obsessed with the UV glasses at Louis Vuitton, Nicolas Gesquet. He always yeah. does really sci-fi surreal things. And then also loads of changes in material uses. So lots of things looked like wool and turned out to be leather. Mm. So that was at the Bottega show. That was also at Louis Vuitton. So for me, I was just so intrigued about the dialogue that was yeah. happening. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Yeah, really, really cool. I felt like there was a lot of leather generally across the board. Mm. Um, Anna, how about you? Yeah, I actually liked the Kate show, the New York Fashion Week. I, I thought that show was amazing. Yeah. Um, there was a piece that stood out to me. It was like a fur green, like to the floor coat. I was like, oh my God, I need that now, <laughs> yeah. right now. Um, I thought the Bottega show was really, really yeah. good. I absolutely loved it. There's another piece that stood out. Again, I think I'm just looking forward to coats. I don't know why, maybe because it's so cold. It was this kind of burgundy um, croc coat. I, it was just amazing. amazing. And like loads of boots stood out in that show as well. Like yeah. high, high boots and stuff like that. So those are kind of my favourite. I'm kind of doing my roundup of Paris at the moment, just watching yeah. which ones I love. But I've had a look at the um, Louis Vuitton show which looked mm. absolutely amazing. It was super cool. Yeah, yeah, super, super cool. Yeah, gorgeous. So, yeah. I think, yeah, Paris for me was the kind of the winner. I think Loewe maybe was my favourite, mm. not to be too basic about it, but it was just gorgeous, that kind of juxtaposition between the kind of drapey feminine fa fabrics and those like slouchy leather boots I just thought was yeah. super cool. Lots to be inspired by, wasn't there? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I could talk fashion with you <laughs> all day long. <laughs> Now, sticking with the fashion chat, um, Anna Bromelow, SL's contributor and stylist to the stars, shares five evening looks for spring. Hi, I'm Anna Bromelow and I am here with Sheer Lux today to talk about glamorous evening wear for spring. I am so excited that we're waving goodbye to winter, to hopefully saying goodbye to gray days. It's all about beautiful, glamorous hero pieces for evening. So first up, leopard print. It's one of my favorite, favorite prints to wear for evening. I love it pretty much head to toe, really full on and quite loud. One of the nicest pieces I've seen this season is from Sister Jane. I love a bit of Sister Jane. It has fabulous volume and drama for evening. This also has quite a nice vintage look, it's not too short and this ladylike uh, collar works really, really nicely. I would even wear this with flats, possibly, kind of Mary Jane flats, or you could really um, pump up the glamour and wear it for heels. So for spring with a leopard print, to make it a bit more uh, light and elegant and less uh, dense and heavy, you can wear white shoes and accessories or nude accessories with it. I love this from Yoke. I'm such a big fan of the pajama look, such a, an effortless, easy way to go into evening. And I also end up with this set wearing them separately. So I often wear this top 
with leather trousers or put a chic cashmere jumper with this. It's a really nice way of transitioning into the new season. Next, pink. I absolutely adore wearing this colour. It's my favourite pop of colour to wear. It has kind of red carpet connotations. It's been seen on the cover of Vogue a million different times. It's less harsh than red. And this has to be one of my ultimate favourite designs of the moment from Anna Mason. It's again short, which is brilliant for this time of year. I love the fact that it has this belt so you can cinch it in and make it a little bit sassier or you just play on this volume and wear it without the belt. But the colour is just absolutely off the charts. It's a real kind of neon magenta. It feels very, very luxe and it's super flattering on. Next, this was a real find from Bowden of all places. I actually wore this to a recent Sherlux dinner, which I very much enjoyed. It's a fab marshmallow pink and is super flattering. I love how wide the trousers are. I sized up on this to make it feel a bit more modern. I think with pink, you have to be a little bit careful not to go too kitsch. So I'd lay off wearing kind of diamond crystal accessories. And actually I find gold and pink is a bit too much. So I'll often dial things down and either go for a nude or a silver. Also great with a red lip. And one of my absolute favorite evening wear designers of the moment, who I adore Magda Butrim. I absolutely love this dress. It's got a kind of Studio 54 vibe to it. And the color, it's so perfect for spring. It's such an easy go-to color pink, I think, at this time of year. Super flattering. Again, it's that beautiful marshmallow shade. I love the length of it. You could even wear this with flats in the spring, actually. Sleeves are so elegant and beautiful. Again, I wouldn't over-accessorize it. I'd keep things really simple and metallic. I really love wearing metallic. It's such a, a luminous, modern direction to go in for evening. And you can make things really very spring-like. So this dress is from the designer Aline. Again, really, really good price point. It's the kind of shape that I would easily wear for day, actually. But I'd end up making it much more glamorous by going with quite full-on silver accessories, like long silver spiky boots with it. Again, it can be belted or just left as is. And with this, I would wear more glamorous, blingy jewelry with it to really pump up the glam factor. And another way to wear metallics is to go for a skirt. And you can dress this down with Kind of again a cashmere jumper this kind of thing which has a, a metallic thread in it or even just a white t-shirt again you could wear long boots to go underneath this or to make it more spring-like wear your sandals with it but i think a silver pleat is very elegant this one is valentino but if you're looking for a better price point the frankie shop have a really fab lame one that's in at the moment and white white for springtime is really beautiful the direction I normally go in with white is to either make it quite sculpted or I mix things um, up in terms of tone and add a little bit of cream into the mix. So really a fan of this look. This is just Zara, so good old high street. I love that this silk dress is not cut on the bias. I often find with bias cut that it's not the most flattering shape. And this is just a straight cut. And I really love this modern combination with the cream paillettes on top. So this is a lovely springtime, quite minimalist direction to go in for evening. You could either wear sandals with it, or again, if it's a little bit chilly outside, you could wear long cream boots. And then moving things into a kind of more couture direction, a designer who I've only just discovered called Benedetti, which is on matches currently. Love the shape. I don't know whether you can see, but it's a off the shoulder cape number. So your arms come through here. It's got beautiful rosettes all the way around it. Love this. Has hints of Valentino about it. Next, I absolutely love wearing a bit of boho, a boho luxe feeling for evening. This is Le Double J and it is quite, quite the statement. A bit of Lurex thread running through this. It's really quite bold. But I always think with a very bold print, if you're wearing it on the bottom, it's quite a nice way of doing it. I probably keep things 
very simple and wear just a, a black vest with it. For evening, I do like wearing quite a lot of costume jewellery. And I think when you're combining costume jewellery with a print, especially a Lurex one, it can look very embellished and beautiful. A different direction to go in, I think, at this time of year. But I love that. And I'm all about buying pieces that you will wear the whole year round. This dress I have lived in in the spring. It's by a bespoke designer called Grace Wears, who I absolutely adore. It's got that Lame floral print, which I always think is really beautiful. It's kind of springtime flowers, but with that metallic running through, pushes it into evening. It's such an easy shape to wear this. Super, super flattering. It's kind of fab with my tassel boots as is. And again with this, I really max it up with accessories. I put on tons, loads, because it's got the, the low neck. I put on quite a few necklaces. Long dangly earrings, almost a little bit kind of boho gypsy. So I really hope you've enjoyed my roundup of key inspirational looks for this spring for your evening wear. Oh, I loved that. That white sequin bomber and slip dress that really spoke to me, I think. Anything that caught your eye, ladies? Billy? Big fan of the leopard print. Oh I thought God, that yeah. was great. It's just so nice to see, like, colour and print. But I say this wearing grey and black. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, joyful dressing. It does. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, like, edge my way closer to you. Yeah. <laughs> get some of that tutorial joy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of fun stuff in there that I'm excited to wear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Anna's really top of her game, isn't she? And speaking of women at the top of their game, it's International Women's Day tomorrow. And the theme this year is embracing equity and working together to create an inclusive world. So I'd love to know who inspires you and who do you think is making kind of positive change in the world generally? Uh, Flora, maybe I'll come to you first. Um, I'm just going to kind of shout out to one of my friends, Charlotte uh, Williams of 76 Agency. Oh, yeah, she's um, amazing. She's the most incredible woman anyway, very stylish, but her company helps brands increase their diversity, inclusivity in their campaigns, their messages, uh, their business practices. She also does the most incredible influencer insight, re insight reports to help women of colour so that no one is kind of scrimping or you know you can feel like you're mm. valued I just think that's such an important message especially for women in the creative industries to you know feel like they're being paid correctly uh, to feel like they're being respected properly mm. so yeah shout out to Charlotte yeah she's an absolute <laughs> boss I love her um, Anna how about you so I think for me not to be a cop-out but it's more a network of women in my life that I think inspire me for various different reasons you know I think someone that I work really close with Lee to um, Annie who you know we launched a consultancy together she inspires me you know um, a lot I think there's women in my life that inspire me to be a better mother um, and yeah one of my rock star friends uh, my friend Shakira she's got a lovely name <laughs> um yeah she inspires me she's career driven she is you know really kind of pioneering working with youth young people mm. um so it's it's a multitude of like different women in my life and I think mm. for me it's all about that network really yeah yeah I think it's really important isn't it to be kind of inspired by different types of people yeah. because I think they really make you a well-rounded exactly. person don't they and Billy how about you um Mine is on a more of a global scale than as a network of friends, although I love my friends and they inspire me daily. <laughs> um, but Lizzo is, yeah, I yeah. feel like she just, she just makes me feel so happy. She makes me feel accepted. She inspires like so many women to see beyond what we have been traditionally taught is what is beautiful, what, she, mm. what success looks like. And, you know, I, I don't like to use the word like breaking moulds, but like she is smashing boundaries basically. Mm. And I just think that, I wish I'd seen somebody like that when I was younger on, on screen telling me that I was beautiful and that mm. I was important and that I was special. So, yeah, yeah. go Lizzo. Yeah, she's an awesome role model, isn't she? Amazing. Um, I think for me, I'd also like to shout out a, a friend of mine um, called Emily. She's an artist in her spare time and over the past sort of year or so has raised over £100,000 for charity by wow. selling her art. That's and incredible. It's all kind of wow. to do with charities associated with various humanitarian crises, whether that's kind of the abortion laws in America or the floods in Pakistan or the earthquakes recently. So, yeah, she really mm. inspires me, I think. Well, thanks, ladies. Loads of people to add to my follow list there. Will you be doing anything for International Women's Day, Billy? I am actually doing a panel with Georgie tomorrow at Soho House. Amazing. Um, with lots of amazing entrepreneurs and women trying to grow their businesses mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's been really inspiring and 
supportive event. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's going to be amazing. Cool. Um, Anna, how about you? Um, I mean, I don't tend to do anything personally, but maybe through work stuff. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, kind of a work gathering. We've got um, a webinar and a conference coming up cool. for International Women's Day. So that's something we're doing. Amazing. And um, Flora, how about you? Um, I'm going to be attending a drinks and dinner at Albright, the All Women's Club here in London. Nice. So that'll be a nice community. Busy ladies, love that. Uh, next up is a bit of a spin on Fashion Month content. SL's fashion and beauty writer Satna Rao jumped at the chance to go behind the scenes at London Fashion Week and chat to some of the designers about the inspiration behind the makeup for the shows. Take a look at what she got up to and who she'd met. It's fashion week and we are going to be taking you along to three shows and although you'll get loads of fashion content on site and on the show we're actually going to be taking you backstage to talk about makeup and hair which is going to be really cool so we've been invited today to Paul Costello who is just like a British and Irish icon and we're going to be asking their makeup artist Michelle Webb a couple of questions and hopefully just pinch a couple of the other makeup artists and maybe even the hair people and just see what happens. So cool back here, it's so buzzy, like, so what's going on? Hi, Hi. Satna, nice, Hi, to, nice meet to meet you. you. What is the inspiration behind the looks today that you're going to be creating? Um, well, we looked at the collection, we looked at all the different fabrics yes. and colours running through, so we really wanted to do a makeup that was strong and feminine, but kind of yeah. complemented what was going on through the collection. So we've done a really strong kind of um, blown out smoky eye with kind of pops of like gold and copper in the middle. Then we've done kind of a lip as if they've been wearing it like all day long. We're using a um, PWT trophy rifle of lip. I think it works really well with the collection and the hair. Hi there, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions just about the hair you're creating? So these are wigs that you're using? We're, we're doing a little combo. Paul, Paul's inspiration yeah. you know, is from James Joyce's Ulysses. Okay. And, you know, within that we've got a really wild Irish woman. Okay, yeah, cool. Free, independent, empowered. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got natural hair textures where we're getting that natural movement oh, really in. beautiful, yeah. And then we've also got some rolls as well, oh, wow. which just give us some volume. Yeah. So, hi, thank you so much for having, taking some time to speak oh, to us. Delighted. We'd love to ask you a bit about the inspiration behind your collection today. Yeah, sure. The inspiration for the yeah. collection was based on a day in Dublin James Joyce Ulysses, which is which is a, a lot of major characters like yeah. Leopold Bloom, right. all these amazing people, mm -hmm. and it's one day, and I've taken Dublin and I've moved it forward to right. the 21st century, and I've been using exceptional amount of Irish fabrics yeah. and Italian fabrics, and the clothes are very soft, romantic, fluid. Mm. Yeah, it's an expression of Ireland, an expression of Dublin, expression of, of cinema, of mm -hmm. Irish cinema. And what's your favourite piece from the entire My favourite piece collection. is probably one of, one of, the, one of the coats. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is With a lot incredible. of texture it's really and beautiful. character. Mm. And it's like, it, it requires a strong woman. Mm -hmm. and, and Irish women, for, for good and bad and indifferent, they are strong. the vibes in there and like the energy was crazy and the bar is set really high for the next few shows we're going to um, but we're really excited. Day two we're at the Royal Academy of the Arts and we are going to be going behind the scenes at Amelia Wickstead they are working with Bobby Brown I feel like today it's gonna to be super feminine very pared back hopefully we'll get some good tips for a good glowy natural makeup look so let's go do you mind telling us a little bit about the inspirations behind the looks that you're creating today? Yeah. There's three, isn't there? There's four, actually. Four? I mean, they're kind of, one of them's a variation, but yeah, we're doing four looks, and the idea was kind of, Amelia had this idea of, like, Twin Peaks meets kind of 90s, tough, cool girls. So, on some, we're bleaching the brow and doing this really bold red lip that I'm going to make matte. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Very gorgeous skin. 
Um, the next look is a bleach brow with the black paint that's just um, applied across the eye. And then the next look is like a very strong, almost painted black eyebrow. And then the final look is the combination of the, um, the eyebrow with the paint along the, along the eye. It's a really bare, clean face, so we're just using uh, skin on where weightless foundation to even out the skin tone, vitamin enriched face base for that lovely sheen, and then yeah, just these bold delicates. I was really surprised actually because Amelia works is very like feminine, like really pretty, and like the makeup is quite bold and quite like edgy almost, which is really cool that they're doing that like contrast. I'm interested to see what they're doing with hair, so I think we're going to try and grab one of the hair stylists and ask what's going on. So. Hi, I'm Sid Hayes and we are backstage here at Amelia Wixted and we've created a look which uh, is quite simple. It's got a centre parting, it's tucked behind the ears and because we've got so many different girls with different haircuts, different lengths, different colours, we've really tried to keep their natural textures so that they feel individual and they feel like they're really them. You know, we've got girls with braids and, yeah. and, and like afro hair, and we want those girls to feel like they're still part of this gang or group yeah, of cool. girls. But they're cool and they've got their braids and they're who they are. So, what's your favourite part of the look? Honestly, the brows. They are so mega. I've got some serious brow envy right now. I want to do that, like, serious, like, bold brow look. Yeah. Oh, my God, look. All the fashion, we're trying not to film that way. Obviously, people are changing and getting ready, but it's it's so good. It's so, so good. Hopefully, you'll see a little snippet of it from the boards and things, but it's just stunning. I really see it all like coming together now when you see the hair, the makeup, and the clothes. Like, it just makes sense. On to the next show. We are going to Brixo. We're we'll speaking with Nas, so let's go. Oh, I'm actually really excited about this one. The whole like vibe on the invite and the new, whoa, <laughs> the new collection is like, Something to do with the Nile, like I guess Egypt vibes, like goddess situation, I don't know. We can ask them all about it when we're there, but that's the vibe I'm getting from the invite. So the look we're creating today is a very kind of loose, mm, wet look. Really nice. um, just kind of nice, like beachy kind of texture. Um, which would just really just complement like the outfits because yeah. everything is quite high end. So how do you achieve this look? What's like the first step to getting that? Um, so the first step is the volume lift, mm -hmm. thickening mousse. So that like, basically just blow dry it in, yeah. um, just gives like really nice structure to the hair, creating like a bait, like a, you see kind of like the S way shape mm, with yeah. the straightness. Um, and then going through with the volume lift root booster to kind of just um, give a bit more of a grit to the hair, so okay. it kind of gives it that wet look. Mm. Wow, look at them. That's so fun. I'd love if you could talk us through the look you're doing today. One of the inspiration images they sent me was actually the Cleopatra yeah. Elizabeth um, yeah, on Taylor in the 1960s that had kind of this like really elongated eye. So what I did is I adapted it to modernize it a bit more. Um, and we came up with a couple shades. You'll see a bit of gold, you'll see blue, you'll see um, some greens. But really kind of what I want to do with, uh, before even the eyes, the makeup is, uh, the skin to be very radiant, glowy, um, to be youthful. So we used a tinted moisturizer, the mm -hmm. NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer, on top of our Radiance Primer to get this really um, nice glow on the skin. Yes. And then brows and lashes are very simple, just brushed up with some brow gel, Climax Mascara on the lashes, um, and then the Orgasm Multiple, which is one of my favorite products, um, which you can use lips, cheeks, and eyes. I've used it on the lips. Um, so really, the when you look at the makeup, it's all about the it's getting busier now so we're going to leave them to it thank you guys so much for coming along to these three shows it's been so fun let's go back to the office <laughs> no <laughs> yes let's go back to the office Thanks so much, Satna. I love that. Paul Costello seems so nice, doesn't he? What a lovely guy. And so fascinating to see behind the scenes. I think London really did us proud, didn't it, this season? Yeah. Very, very cool. Right, from fresh fashion inspo to what to wear right now. It's kind of fair to say that it's like, 
you know, we're all thinking about our spring wardrobes, but it's not quite warm enough to wear Definitely them yet. Not. So <laughs> what are we all doing to kind of keep our winter wardrobes feeling fresh? Have you got anything on your wish list? Uh, Flora, I'll come to you. Um, throwing me in at the deep end straight away. <laughs> I mean, one, I have a terrible shopping addiction, so I'm always Same. adding things to my wish list. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this cold snap's not been great. I'm a huge hat fan, so kind mm. of fluffy bucket hats. Um, I've just invested in an amazing new cap from Alex Eagle that just amazing. goes with everything. It's like a dark denim color. Mm. Um, I'm obsessed with sleeveless jackets, um, especially ones that can tie around the waist. Kind of <laughs> <the point. laughs> but mainly because, you know, you can just add things on yeah. top and you can take things off and it just instantly kind of elevates and changes mm. your look. And everyone has those kind of long puffer car coats right now, but I've just got this huge kimono duvet type nice. coat that I absolutely love and I just wrap myself up kind of like a little sausage roll Ooh, <laughs> whenever I get chilly. That's divine. <laughs> um, Billy, have you got anything? Any yeah. suggestions? I am, um, I'm a big advocate for a really thick bomber jacket uh -huh. because it still feels like you're going to do something that isn't a walk in the park yeah. um, but actually keeps you so warm. I'm obsessed with the ASOS edition ones. They come in like every colour. I think oh. there's actually a sequined one that's just come out. Amazing. Um, and they are so thick, so cosy, so warm. So yeah, definitely you need one. Great tip. Um, how about you, Anna? I think for me, as you can see, shoes, um, I think how <laughs> I'm kind of bringing in a bit of interest in my winter wardrobe is metallics, things yeah. like this. I'm really lapping up the trends that are coming up, you know, like especially stuff like this. Um, I think for me, something I'm looking forward to is kind of buying into the bomber trend, the long denim mm. skirts. I'm like yeah, all over too. that. Oh gosh, I love that trend. Um, and then just like oversized jacket, something I've got on my wish list is that Frankie shop kind of, is it the Johnny coat or something? Oh, I it's think I know the one, the massive. really big kind of big I mean, the one. Uh, yeah, yeah, for me, the bigger the better. If it's really looking like it's drowning me, I'm all for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, case that's, in point, the bigger yeah, the better. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of how I'm kind of, yeah, vamping up my winter. Yeah, love that. Do you know what? I feel like this time of year, Every year, I really lean on like a little neckerchief. That's kind of my like hat Love when that. I get a bit bored of my wardrobe. I'm like, I'm wearing jumpers yeah. on repeat. Just a little silk scarf. I yeah. think Arquette have got a few at the moment. Which but also, quite when you get cheerful. bored of that, put it around your bun. Exactly. Amazing hairpiece. On your I'm bag when summer comes around. I mean, it's just. It's versatile, there's nothing else. <laughs> it feels like summer's never coming around with this oh, cold. Oh, don't, honestly. don't. I mean, <laughs> fingers crossed things look up soon because I am bored of this weather. All right, thanks ladies. So many goodies to snap up there. Uh, now, if you are thinking about switching to delivery meal kits to either mix things up for a more healthy option or just to avoid the weekly supermarket shop, then this next segment is for you. Summer Pine puts three brands to the test. Hi, I'm Summer and today I'm going to be road testing three recipe boxes. I don't know about you, but I always get stuck in that midweek rut of what to cook. So I'm looking forward to uncovering these boxes. So let's get started. So first up is the Cookaway box. It's one of the Malaysian recipes created by Ping Coombs, who's on MasterChef. And she has created a recipe that she grew up with and it has a bit of a story and history about it. So this is the chili beef along with some fried rice. I've gone through all the ingredients, they're here. So we're gonna bash this meat and roll it out so it gets really thin. Now what we need to do is gonna roll the beef and then we're gonna thinly slice the beef. And there you go, you've got your light little beef strips. So the next uh, thing we need to do is roll our meat in the corn flour. So what you wanna do is just cover each strip of beef. They don't have to be perfect either because once they go into the frying pan that'll be nice and crispy. So the next part of the recipe is I'm going to add the sunflower oil to a wok. I'm going to just turn the wok on. So I'm going to let this heat up and then I'm going to add a little bit of corn flour and if that starts sizzling away you know that's ready to go. Okay so we're going to start cooking in batches so we make sure that everything's evenly cooked. You don't want to overcook it but you just want to cook it so it's a bit golden and you can see that it's crisping up. That is sizzling so nicely. I'm going to turn them over so that they cook evenly on each side. So you can see that's nice and golden and crispy. We're going to start taking that out. I'm going to let the excess oil drip off. So we're just going to cook off the last batch and then we'll be ready to get to the next section. 
The next part of the recipe is mixing all the sauces together. So we've got clear plum sauce, we have sweet chilli sauce and light soya sauce, as well as a lemon and an orange. And so we're simply gonna mix all these ingredients together. We're gonna put them in a saucepan, bubble away until it goes nice and sticky. We're gonna add the beef. So let's put that in there. Light soy sauce. Okay, so we're going to slice the lemon and I'm just gonna juice that into the mixture. Okay, and then half a rind of the orange and then the juice as well. So I'm just gonna put that in there like that. Right, so I'm just mixing those ingredients. I'm gonna put that on medium heat. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stir and you want it to get thicker in consistency and get that real sort of stickiness about it before we add the beef. I'm gonna start with my rice, which I've pre-washed. Let that simmer for about 10 minutes. As you can see, this is now nice and sticky. So I'm just going to start adding the beef and we're just gonna cook for one minute and then it's, it's ready. You just wanna get that evenly covered and get the heat through, then you're done. Just gonna put it in a nice serving dish. So my rice is nice and fluffy and we're ready to get onto the fried rice. We're just gonna stir that through. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put my rice over to the left of the pan and then I'm gonna add the eggs. So you can see I'm just scrambling the egg and then when it's cooked, I'm just gonna fold that in with the rice. And then to that I'm gonna add the peas and the spring onion. So now I'm ready to serve that on my beef dish. Okay, so our fried rice is ready. I'm just gonna serve that up. Look at that, that smells and looks delicious. So there you have it, my chili beef and egg fried rice. Mm, super delicious. So the next recipe box that I'm going to be using is from Riverford and today we're going to be doing shiitake and broccoli kimchi rice. All the ingredients are sourced from local farmers, so it's sustainable and ethical. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Porcini mushrooms, broccoli, onion, ginger. Let's get started. I've got some boiling water here and I'm just going to pop my mushrooms in there and then just let them soak while you get on with the prepping the rest of the ingredients. So I'm gonna start chopping my vegetables, but before I do that, I'm just gonna put some boiling water on the stove because I'm going to cook the rice as I'm prepping everything else. Okay, so I've just chopped the onion in half and then thinly slice. We have the shiitake mushrooms and all I'm gonna do with those is I'm just gonna cut them in half, like so. Okay, and then now I'm just going to prepare the broccoli. So I'm just gonna take away all the leafy bits and then we're just going to cut them into nice little florets. So now that we've prepared the vegetables we're now going on to the aromatics. We've got um, some garlic and some ginger. Now with ginger the way I like to peel it and I think it's the, the only method really because otherwise you end up wasting a lot but I just use a spoon and I go like this and then that will take all the skin off and then we're just going to grate that. Chop up the garlic. I just like to smash it like that. The skin easily comes off. I grab those shiitake mushrooms that were soaking there, now nice and soft. And I'm just going to finely chop them. I'll just do one at a time. Because we don't like to waste the broccoli stalk. We are just going to slice the edges so you get a nice sort of uh, rectangle shape, I guess you could say. You could just use a knife, but I'm gonna use my peeler so I get nice thin ribbons. To this, I'm just going to add some lime juice and let that soak. And then we're gonna go over to the hob and we're gonna toast some almonds and they're gonna go on top. So you just wanna turn on the heat so it's on medium heat and then I'm gonna put my almond flakes in. Make sure you keep an eye on them, give them a little bit of a stir because what you don't want is for them to burn. The almonds are getting nice and toasted and I'm just gonna pop them to the side. So now we're ready to put our fry pan on medium heat. We're gonna start with a little bit of sesame oil and to that I'm gonna add onions. You can see that the onions are now starting to get a little bit opaque and they're starting to break down a little bit and that is a good time to start putting the broccoli in. To this I'm gonna add the dry mushrooms as well as the shiitake mushrooms. And we're gonna let this cook down for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna add my ginger and my garlic. Stir this through, and then we've got some mushroom liqueur that we're gonna add. And I've actually never used this before, but I 
guess for plant-based cooking, this adds a lot of flavour that you'd normally get from, say, chicken stock, something like that. So. And what we want the vegetables to do is to absorb all that liquid. So we're cooking till tender, but still with a crunch. I think that's the best way to have your vegetables. I'm going to add the kimchi. Stir that in a bit. I'm going to add the rice. And then we're just going to give this a nice stir. You want all the flavours through the rice and the vegetables. And that is ready to plate. Okay, so we are now ready to serve up. You take the broccoli ribbons, add a little bit of the sesame oil. I love that sesame oil flavour. And then to that, I'm going to add the nice toasted almonds. That is looking fabulous. Now all I need to do is taste it to let you know what it's like. Oh, it's super, super delicious. So the third box that we're looking at today is from Mindful Chef. Today we're going to be cooking sweet and sticky crispy chicken stir fry. There are lots of recipes in there, especially if you have an intolerance to gluten, dairy. Let's go through the ingredients. We have coriander, peppers, carrots, cabbage. We've got some chopped up organic chicken. So I'm going to just add to a bowl and to this we're going to mix the corn flour and then we are going to add some seasoning and then I'm just going to mix that with my hands so it's lightly covered. All right, let's get started with the peppers. So we are going to cut the ends off. I'm going to just take that middle bit out. And then I'm going to thinly slice the green peppers. So I'm going to just roughly chop the spring onions. And by the way, I've washed all the vegetables. These are all organic, so it's great to know that there's no pesticides that are being used. Okay, so cabbage. I'm just going to thinly slice this. Like so. Okay, so that's that done. And then there's a nice bunch of coriander. And I'm just going to roughly chop that. And then we've got some chili. So I'm just going to cut them in half. I'm just going to chop these up. They can just be roughly chopped. Okay, so I'm just going to quarter the lime. So last but not least, we are just going to peel the carrots. So I'm going to julienne my carrots because that's much easier. So now that the vegetables are all prepped, I'm going to get onto the chicken. So now we're going to cook our chicken that we prepared earlier. So I'm just going to put the hob onto medium heat. I've added some olive oil. So we're going to add the chicken to the pan. Again, just be really careful not to splash yourself. So always put it away from you. And we just want to evenly coat this with the oil. And we're going to cook this for about one to two minutes until it's nice and golden on the outside. Okay, so that's been a couple of minutes now. My chicken is cooked through, so I am just going to pop that to the side. So we're using the same pan as I cook the chicken, so there's going to be a little bit of flavour. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Conveniently, they've provided me with ginger and garlic paste. I'm going to add the chilli, some of the coriander. I'm just going to mix that in. And now we're just going to start adding the cabbage, the carrots and peppers. Do you know what I'm going to do? Because there's so many ingredients, I'm going to swap to a wok. It'll be much easier to control. Okay, so you can hear that sizzling. I'm just going to start tossing this all together. So I'm now going to add the chicken. I'm just going to finish cooking that off. And then I'm going to add to that the tamari, so it'll be measured. Again, so easy. And we're going to add some honey for some sweetness. So I'm going to put the lime juice in there. So there you have it, a really nutritious meal full of veggies. That was super easy. So now I'm just going to plate up to this. I'm just going to add the leftover coriander. I like just putting a few wedges in so people can just put that over themselves. Maybe you want to put a little bit of chilli on top. So all there is for me to do now is try the dish. Mmm, that is really lovely. Delicious. If you wanted a nutritious meal, high protein, no carbs, gluten free, this might just be the one. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed cooking. So I want to start off with the Mindful Chef. I think for anyone that just wants something really quick and easy, and perhaps if you have dietary requirements like gluten free, there are lots of options in there. What I loved most about that is most of the ingredients were already prepped. I just had to chop the fresh vegetables. So the Riverford box, I really enjoyed cooking with this. I need more ways of getting more vegetables into my diet, so I think this is a good choice if you're vegan or if you're plant-based, and also that you know that you're supporting local farmers, it's organic. The last one, but not least, was the cookaway box. I have to say, this is probably my favourite. For me, this is a bit more adventurous. I love the flavours. You learn about the culture of where the food's coming from, and there's a bit of a backstory. I hope that you um, spice up your midweek and try one of the new recipe boxes. 
thanks so much, Summer. I'm actually already a Mindful Chef user, but that beef from the cookaway looks so good. Um, do you guys use recipe boxes? And I know no, you said you wanted yeah, to get a I go. definitely want to. I don't know which one to go for yet because I'm looking at the right one. Yeah. But with children, I just want to be able to get home from work and just mm. have stuff already there rather than faffing around the shops and stuff. Yeah. So that's what... So, like, how do you find it? Well, that is the beauty of it. I find, like... It's so dull having to go to the supermarket each evening and or just getting home and deciding what to cook. Mm -hmm. And I just love that you can be like, right, well, open my recipe book and this is what I've got. And I'm also not a very good cook. So <laughs> I really like that it's all kind of measured out for me. Yeah. And, you know, it's hard to screw it up, basically. So mm. I'm a fan. How about you, ladies? Do you subscribe to anything? I don't, but I do really want to because I feel like I'm really wasteful with what I have. Mm -hmm. And like, that makes me feel sad. Um, <laughs> so I'm, try I'm trying to be better. And I also really want to broaden my recipe repertoire and I feel like that's quite a good way to do it. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I think just for variety, because when you come back, it's so easy to make the same thing day exactly. in, day out. It is. And that's where they really come into yeah. their own. You're like, mm. I would never think to make, I don't know, this kind of curry or mm. this tiny little nut. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's great. That Simple fried things. rice and, and chicken just looks so, so good. good. Mm. And I was like, yes, I want to make that. <laughs> oh, I know. Today. Yeah, I know. Oh, God, it's really making me quite hungry thinking about it now, all this food chat. Uh, now, next, join the team on a very busy day at the Sherlock's office and see what they get up to. We're doing a parenting special today. So every month we try and do a special, so whether it's um, a parenting show or a wedding show or the gold show, we've got an SL man show coming soon actually, which is exciting. Um, so this is the parenting show, so Louise is hosting and then we've asked three pretty mega mums to come in and we're going to be talking things, motherhood, parenting, relationships, that type of stuff. So we've got Kira Campbell, Louise Boyce, who's, who's mega, Instagram. she's the mum, I still got it, which really makes, Laura Black and I were dying yesterday for some of the videos and then Zoe Hartman who's a presenter on Heart. So this is Winnie Williams' business partner oh. at Poodle and Blonde. Yeah. Do you know what? We actually met just before we started the company. Oh. Everyone thinks you've been friends with you. Yeah, but we're the same God. person. Oh. Like, well, she's literally the white version of me. It's very weird. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> Girls, like, where are your boots from? Uh, I think they are something like Dorothy Perkins. No, yeah. So you're allowed to wait. No, but I know, I know, but they're like that vibe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Fresh off the pole. Fresh off the pole. Just call me Chris Down. Are those trousers in America as well? Ten year old top shops. <sighs> are they? Kids yeah. section. Yeah. Oh, are they? Are they actually? Not from the kids <laughs> section. Oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm wearing my 10-year-old silver jeans. <laughs> I was going to be like, I'll add that to the tweens shopping segment. <laughs> Forget the kids. Hello, I'm Louise Rowe and this is The Sheer Luck Show. Today is a parenting special and we are covering all ages and stages from tween high school fashion to nursery. So like my children <laughs> regularly do. say to me, I'm leaving in the night again. Oh, God. And I'm going off at 5.30 in the morning to do a breakfast show. Which FYI, I'll work my arse off to yeah. get. Yeah, yeah, but right. I'm like... I don't do it all the time. Like, at least you do it twice a week yeah. or something. Okay, well done. Yay! Thanks, guys. That was so much fun. Cray. Can I give you a That's so fun. I was there my whole entire life. I was like, why did you just snap? Like, why? What happened? I pulled out my SD card and it snapped. Oh, and I was like, oh, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, like, we've just filmed for 48 minutes. I've never ran so fast in my life. It's so nice to when you're made. Like, you're like, oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. See you later. Bye. Is that everything done this That's morning for the show? The show's done, so now all the guests are leaving. We're just quickly getting that outfit. Louise is going. Bye. <laughs> this kitchen was so fun. Really, they were really honest, actually. So it's really lovely to have those type of really honest conversations about parenting and motherhood and you know what happens during marriage after kids so now we just need to put it all together and make get it live for uh, six o'clock tonight eloise is on it i know exactly <laughs> hello hey charlotte how are you i'm good how are you i haven't good. seen you all I'm morning all morning i know so we are doing um, we are working on our second sl man takeover our second guest editor his name is william gooch he's a professional ultra 
runner. Um, and so he's done, I mean, he's done like all different kinds of crazy running challenges from 4830, which was a challenge where he did every county in the UK and then 30, a marathon in each one of them for 30 days. He's done Marathon du Saab, and now he's just about to do something called Transcon, which is running from the west coast to the east coast of America. So anyway, he's here. We're in the middle of like back-to-back -back sessions, um, getting loads of content from him, and I thought you might want to join. Cool. Listen. Yeah, definitely. It's good to hear that. Interestingly, what I learned from doing 48.30 was like a routine that really worked. The morning to like early afternoon will be 30 miles, and then I'll stop. Mm -hmm. So I'll still be doing my five mile stops. I'll stop after 30 miles-ish, eat something more substantial. I'll nuke calm nap for, for, for probably 40 minutes to an hour. And then I'll wake up, a bit more fuel, and then, I, and then I'll go again. As vehicle-wise, we have like um, a camper van that will be my vehicle. So it's got a bed in the back already. Mm -hmm. ready. And yeah. sleeping at night, like if someone's snoring. Yeah, you don't need that. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be at some different levels of emotion. So. <laughs> so you've got one job every day, which is your mileage. Mm -hmm. Everyone's doing everything else for you. And then you finish. There's obviously still like an elation thing of finishing, but you naturally will then transition into like a, a low. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad I've been through this before <laughs> because you're almost clutching at straws of like, now, now what do I do? Yeah. There's a lot less interest in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I've raised over a hundred thousand pounds for for charity, so that's like uh, knowing the difference that it, it makes, and like being told, especially from Macmillan, like they've told me what the what the money goes to and that's what it can mean. Um, how about favorite place for a coffee? Caffeine or Monmouth? Oh, nice. Hard to split them up. But yeah, caffeine's obviously in Soho, East Castle Street, Great Titchfield Street. I've got to know the owner because I've gone there so so often. <laughs> How's um, the morning been? All good. It's been great. good. Yes. I know everything about one's life. Yes. Especially the subjects. Book no, absolutely not. So if you don't mind just taking a seat here and then you might want to have a I don't know if you've got five off the cuff now. Hi there, I'm William Googe and I'm here with SL Man to give you my five top marathon tips. And final tip number five, it's a marathon. The energy is crazy, so just go out there and have a bloody good time. Great, thank you so much. If I could just get a picture of the farm as well, yep. that'd be great. Yeah. Kate, what's going on? Oh, Tell us. There's a crap van outside. Yeah. You booked the crap van. Oh, I didn't. I'd like to, to say here. I did, but no, this is all Jesse's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I went a bit rogue. I got the lamb complete, but with cheese, ham, and pesto. Wow, so you mixed it up a bit she of a customized one. I just got the lamb yeah. complete. Yeah. Ham and cheese. Ham, cheese, pesto. Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese, simple. Ham, cheese, and pesto. Nice. Hi, Henry. How are you today? I haven't seen you. I haven't I seen know, you today. Yet. I know. You've yeah. got a name tag on. I've got a name. <laughs> we are today um, hosting a workshop with a new charity that we partnered with called Working Chance, a charity that helps female ex-offenders find employment. So we've worked with Key for Life for a long time, and we're really excited to be working with Working Chance. So we've been in a workshop, getting to know some of their candidates and anyway we've now come out for a crap well, I've got a sweet tooth I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Sherlock's and Lux and Co. We've got a couple of Lux and Co team with us. Um, so Sherlock I founded in 2007 and we started as like a directory that listed the best places to buy clothes online or children's clothes, men's, home accessories etc etc. We really promote other brands products and services to those half a million subscribers. So whereas it was just on sheerlux.com, we now create content that we push out onto our TikTok, onto our Instagram, onto our YouTube channel. Please make the most of us and you know if we can help in your next steps then we would we would genuinely really love to um, and the more we can kind of understand what interests you. Yeah and do please walk around the office and meet everyone because as well as kind of all the areas of the business that George used to talk about Everyone has different jobs here, obviously. So we've got people who are photographers, videographers, and people who are designers, people who are really skilled at
Photoshop, you know, so everyone's got real skill sets and I think knowing what everyone does every day. And it might be that you're like, oh, actually, that really mm. interests me. And then we could arrange for you to come and yeah. have a bit of work experience. And, yeah. you know, equally, we've got people doing accounts and <coughs> um, <laughs> office management and, you know, all sorts. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's lots going on. But you want to take the two front meeting rooms. Yeah. Whoever's in them, kick them out and yeah. just take one each. <laughs> yeah. Not giving up, being resilient. And yeah, just seeing them flourish. Mm. And, and I work in retail, but it interests me a little bit more to maybe open up a few more doors to let me explore fashion a little bit more so um right now i'm trying to create my own brand for my kind of for my um paintings kind of oh, wow. okay. um, i was uh, study art in holland then i came here the length you have um, to put the shape To, to you rather than to me. I see you're getting your, taking your opportunity here. <laughs> I know, I'm getting my gels removed with some new paint. Hence, I'm working. One hand on the work, one hand on the... Myself and Lucinda and Evie and training them up to become ready for work. So it's things like support around their disclosure, how to speak to employers um, about their convictions. The empathy that you can get from acknowledging mm. it and not feeling like you're being judged for it and actually feeling like it can be can be a strong point. It's just really important that we build a relationship that they know that we are non-judgmental and that they have so much to give because they've lost their confidence. That's that's the biggest thing that we find. Yeah. They keep having to explain myself and then I'm given no's and not backs and they come in thinking that they're not worthy of anything anymore and, and us reminding them, no, you have got so much to give. Um, but also, you reminding employers, that and too. hopefully this yeah. is where we can help, yeah. that, that they have got so much to give and we've got We've got to do our side of it as well. Yeah, I think absolutely. That's yeah. What's going on in here? Why are you taking over this room? <laughs> We're taking over this room for some castings for a Lexham Co shoot coming up. So we're casting male and female models. I've got two more to come in. Can you tell us anything about the shoot or not yet? So the, the brand itself is um, they do bags, luggage tags, um, notebook, also these like jewellery boxes, things like that. Yeah, we're going to shoot them in a ved wedding scenario. Cool. Um, so we've got to find the right couple now. And we're going to play a Cupid, is that what it's called? Cupid, Cupid. Cupid. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be like, you will fall in love. <laughs> I hate explaining TikToks to people. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so this is for Lux Girl. Um, it's Paris Hilton Sound. Do you feel like people get these ones? Really? Do you not? <laughs> <laughs> Two, one. I love you all, you're beautiful. Mm. And never <laughs> I don't think I don't think you committed. I don't think I did. No. God, this, I'm sweating. <laughs> oh, oh, he just got oh. Oh. Everyone is a princess. Okay, yeah, we got it. <laughs> Can you put these on my desk? Yeah. They're the best. I mean, we're not sponsored by pairs. <laughs> Socks, but you might as we might as well be, frankly, because the whole team lives in these. Yeah. It smells lovely in here, by the way. Does the, it? Do you know what that is? That is Kate Moss, Cosmos. It's called Sacred Mist, and she launched a few things in her range. Oh, it's really right on my street. She's talking of fragrance. This is Replica, which is a really nice fragrance brand. Ripe grapes, soaked in warm sunshine, the delicate yet. Decisive character of wild roses. Delicate yet decisive. That's quite good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's really nice. This is Chloe Kardashian's line. Bodies are amazing. I think they're like 70 quid. They're a bit scuba-y, so they really hold you in. I really like them. It's quite a high neck. I think it's quite a sexy nighttime look with a blazer and like a chunky gold necklace. Anyway, I love these. Club Matters, the tableware that's talked about. Oh my god, it's these, this Mac company. I love these. Oh, nice. Love a bit of shagreen. Oh, those are really nice. Oh, those are lovely. It's from Poodle and Blonde. Oh, wow. That is Winnie Williams and Kira Campbell. 
who run Poodle and Blonde, which we love at Sherlock's. He's, that is beautiful. I love them. They are like the coolest, coolest ladies in the world of interiors right now. Mm -hmm. That's it, Henry. Amazing. Thank you. That's all I got. Thanks. Thanks. Anytime. Come back soon. <laughs> Okay guys, it's time to go now, Hodge, oh, and Mark. Thank thanks you. for a fun day. I've loved having you, it's been a busy one, hasn't it? It has, it's full. It's been really Especially busy. for Emma. No, <laughs> this I week. haven't seen daylight today. I'm seeing the studio. Yeah, yeah. planning tomorrow's shoot. Yeah, big shoot tomorrow. Yeah, exciting tomorrow. Yeah. shoot tomorrow. Exciting. We'll Days see more of that on. next week, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thanks, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. See you. Bye. Oh, I love that. I'm only in one day a week now, so it's really fab to see what everyone gets up to when I'm not there. Um, Billy and Flora, you've kind of recently gone freelance. Do you guys miss office life at all? Massively, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. What about it do you miss? Oh, I miss the, like, the small chat of yeah. what are you having for lunch, what are you going to have for dinner, what are you watching, did you see this episode? Yeah. Oh, my God, scandal, do you see this thing? Like, <laughs> well, it's also, like, all the accidental meets of, like, not necessarily the people you hang out with all the time in the office, but suddenly you haven't seen someone for you for a week and you're like, hello, yeah. what have you been doing? <laughs> yeah. it. It's like a little touch point. It's that sense of community and yeah. yeah. And also I love a desk and your space. Mm. I'm not a hot desk girl. But now no, it's, it's hard to get that in the office. It's usually hot desk now. Yeah. So no, I've got the best stressful. of both worlds. I find yeah. that stressful. I want to know where everything is. Yeah. <laughs> I like my mug, my yeah. pen. Yeah, like, I sound a bit possessive. No, not at all. <laughs> I love to have like a candle on my desk. You yeah. know, create a bit of ambiance. Yeah. You know, and if it's hot desking, it just feels a bit, feels a bit bare, doesn't yeah, it? it? Does not super exciting. Anna, you're a bit of a, a hyphenate, aren't you? How yeah. do you manage? I mean, I've that? got the best of both worlds. So I do a corporate job, run a consultancy. So I'm doing kind of everything. So I get to work on my own quite a lot. Mm. But I have that office experience. You know, chatting about what's on Netflix, watching Sex yeah. Life on Netflix. So. I'm getting into <laughs> yeah. that. Like, it's Ooh, good. That show is it's amazing. amazing, isn't it? Amazing. The first um, season was good, so second good seasons, yeah. It's they've like ranked up the the drama. Oh it's, really? Yeah, it's really really good. Look at us, we're going. <laughs> we're going off. <laughs> this is, this is we are the office. We are the office. <laughs> <laughs> Let's create our own little exactly. office. Exactly. Nice, so yeah, so I like a mix of both. Really. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, I feel like I like my one day a week in the office where I get to have my kind of rubbish chat about, you know, my favourite crisps and my favourite TV shows. It <laughs> never gets old, that chat, It does really it? doesn't. I can ask it in like a thousand times and I can, I'm always happy to give my answer. I'll hold that for another time. All right, ladies, thanks so much. That was loads of fun. Uh, thank you so much to our wonderful palace, Billy, Flora and Anna, as well as Sapna, Anna, Summer and, of course, all the SL team. Next week, Louise Rowe is back. We have some tips for a new take on power dressing with Lisa Marinelli, a pretty iconic interview with a beauty powerhouse. There's a day behind the scenes at a super cool business, plus lots more. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a lovely day wherever you are. Goodbye.